Welcome back to Cooking with Pushita Creek Steaks. I'm Big Dan Wilson alongside Amanda Lifferton, and today we're cooking meatloaf. Let's talk about this comfort food meatloaf. It's a great recipe that you have online. People can get it at any time, but cooking with Pushita Creek Steaks makes it a little extra special, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. So our meat's antibiotic and hormone-free. It's processed at a local federally inspected facility, and we get rave reviews on, on, on the quality. Well, let's talk about the ingredients. What goes into Amanda's amazing meatloaf recipe? <laughs> so this meatloaf has a pound of ground beef, and you can see um, the package of ground beef right there. Um, we used some panko breadcrumbs, three quarters of a cup. Uh, three quarters of a cup of ketchup, half a cup of ketchup goes into your meatloaf. And then another quarter of a cup of, of your ketchup goes onto your meatloaf 10 minutes before it's ready. A uh, half a cup of minced onion, one egg, a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, two teaspoons of minced garlic. Don't screw up and put a tablespoon in it. It will be very garlicky. One teaspoon of dried thyme and three quarters of a teaspoon of pepper and a half a teaspoon of salt. Let's talk about specifically what cut of meat goes into this particular burger that you use or this particular hamburger to make this meatloaf recipe? So um, our ground beef is an 80-20 mixture, which means there's 80% muscle and 20% fat. And um, it's all of the, like, say if we get a steak that, or if they, pro when they're cutting it up and they are cutting my steaks and a steak at the very end is cut way too small then that goes into the mix or if you know they're cutting roasts and they have a chunk of meat that's too small to make the actual roast then that gets thrown in there and it all gets ground up and ground and mixed with the fat and gets ground into the ground beef so let's talk about the cooking process now so when you first start, the very first thing you want to do is you want to turn your oven on and set it to 350 degrees. That way your oven will be warm by the time and ready to go by the time you get all your ingredients mixed together. So And then after that, then in a bowl you want to mix, put your ground beef, your breadcrumbs. In other recipes you can use other things like um, homemade, you can make your own breadcrumbs or you can use mother's oats and so on and so forth. But this is just a simple classic recipe. And so we just used um, the panko breadcrumbs. And then you put your half a cup of ketchup, your onion, your egg, your Worcestershire, your garlic, your thyme. Other recipes, when it comes to the thyme, you can use cumin and, and other spices, but this recipe we just used thyme. And then your salt and pepper. And then you mix it with your hands. It's just easier to use your hands, get your hands dirty, get it all mixed together. And then you put it in your, I put mine in a loaf pan. You can use the big loaf pans. You can use, they have smaller little single loaf pans. You can put, put it in that for smaller helpings if you're just by yourself. And then you put it in the oven and you bake it for 45 to 50 minutes at 350 degrees like 10 minutes before it's ready to come out, you take that last little quarter cup of ketchup and you smear it around on the top and put it back in for 10 minutes. And when it gets to 160 degrees, it's good to go. Pull it out of the oven, set it on top of the stove for about 10 minutes to let it rest and let all those juices get back into that meat and cut it into slices and serve it. How many servings can you get out of this particular recipe? Approximately five to eight servings. Depends on how big you want to cut your slices when you cut it up. And let's talk about the girl's friend seasoning in replace of some of these spices. Would you normally recommend that for this particular recipe? So there's different takes on the meatloaf. You can do like, um, they've got western takes, they've got taco meatloaf and this classic meatloaf. And so yeah, if you wanted to like kick it up with the cumin a little bit and add a little smoke flavor with that paprika that's in that, you could probably put some of that in there and it'll, ch it'll just gonna change the flavor a little bit, but it'll give it a little more western style. So, Well, of course, this recipe is available through your cookbook. Let's talk about this new cookbook that you're making available to customers out there. On our website, on our blog, we have um, recipes, and then also on our Facebook page, we have recipes that we post. So we kind of went through and picked some of our favorite recipes and put them into a little simple cookbook. And so, so the cookbook, um, you get 
the cookbook when you place an order with us and we ship it out. We put some bonus swag in. There's a magnet. And then I thought this cookbook was a good idea just to give you some ideas on different ways to cook your different cuts of beef. So while we're talking to you at the start of 2021, let's do a quick review of 2020 amid COVID and you're getting your meats processed and getting them to customers. It actually works out pretty good from a delivery standpoint where they don't have to go in to a store and having those fresh cuts of locally grown hormone-free beef in their freezer delivered right to their door. Yeah, exactly. And especially with COVID, we've had some people ask some questions about, is my is our beef safe? And in my opinion, it's a lot safer than just going to the grocery store and getting it because not that many people have handled my beef. It goes and gets harvested at Keystone Meats in Lima, and they get the federal USDA stamp. Curly's and Jackson Center goes and picks it up. They cut it up for me, and then it goes into the freezer and gets frozen. And they say that the COVID virus can't handle that cold temperature, and it kills it. So when they when my beef is done being cut up, they call me up. I go pick it up. It's already packaged and boxed. I bring it home. I put it in my freezer, and it's hit that cold temperature for the second time. And then if I'm shipping it, and, and I can ship anywhere in the continental United States, so when I'm shipping it, it goes into an insulated container. The dry ice should then kill the, kill the virus, essentially. And so it's basically had three times that if there has been any exposure, the virus should, should be done for. And that's why they call it Amanda's Amazing Meat. It's unbelievable. Let's talk about that website again. Yeah, so the website is PashitaCreekSteaks.com, and then we've also made it a little bit easier for people to find. We've got AmandasAmazingMeats.com. Well, why we have you want to talk about a new product that you have for the animal lovers out there with those domestic pets, if you will. There's a real cool doggy treat that is taking the world by storm here in West Central Ohio. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so it's available on the website, too, at PashitaCreekSteaks.com or Amanda's Amazing Meats. Um, it's called Love Leia Dog Treats, and there's hearts and livers. And basically what I do is I take my hearts and my livers, and I slice them on the food slicer, dehydrate them, and package them up, and sell them to the public. And everybody's dogs love them. Nobody complains. <laughs> That's fantastic. Amanda Lifferton has been our guest from Peshitta Creek Steaks, and this has been Cooking with Peshitta Creek Steaks on In Ohio Country Today. For more information, as always, you can go to their website or check us out at In Ohio Country Today, and we'll have a link to those websites as well.